a pair of shoes that you are going to spike. I'm using these, which you can purchase at snaz75.com. And the reason that I'm using these shoes is because I am making these for um, go-go dancing. And these are actually really comfortable. So they're like padded um, and they have like insoles. So despite the platform and the heel, they are surprisingly comfortable. So whatever pair of shoes you want to use is fine. You're also going to need a power drill with a drill bit at the end. So the one I'm using is by Black & Decker and I got it from Target for like $10. Um, I like the handheld ones better because you have better control with them um, when you're working on a project like this and you're kind of working um, on like a small surface area. You don't need to go out and buy like some crazy power drill or some serial killer weapon to do this project. And this one has um, an area where you can take out uh, the top and you can kind of put like different attachments on. You want to get one where you are able to put like a drill bit piece in because that's how you're going to be punching your holes. You could also use a lancet which is like a stick kind of that has a really sharp edge but for this project I find that the material we're spiking is pretty thick so a power drill works best. You're also going to need some spikes and all of these are from studsandspikes.com. You can see that they come in a variety of shapes, sizes, and colors and here are some really really big ones right here. I'm using a bunch of different ones here. So the difference between a cone spike versus a tree spike is really just the shape. So um, on the left is a one inch cone spike and on the right is a one inch tree spike. And you can kind of see it has like a square kind of base. So you can really use whatever kind of spikes you want. Um, Studsandspikes.com has so many different options and they're really affordable so I really recommend checking out their website to purchase materials if you're interested in doing this project. The best thing about this product is that the base or the backing is completely flat. So if you um, use the method I show you um, in this project then they won't irritate the back of your heels at all or anywhere on your foot because it's really lying completely flat against the shoe. So I already tried them on, I wore them around just to make sure, and it was good, it passed the test. So um, it's not going to irritate you, you're not going to need like band-aids, you're not going to get blisters or anything like that. So that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to start by holding the drill bit of our power drill on our shoe where we want our spike to be. And I'm filming this with the other hand, so hopefully this works. but. Um, you really just want to hold it there and then start to drill. Okay, there we go. So it's through. And then I kind of just move it back and forth to make the hole a little bit bigger. So we're going to pull it out. It's not as big as these because I kind of stretched these out depending on the size of your drill bit. Like the spike isn't going to fit through this hole. So the way that I've been spiking these is by taking a one inch cone spike and just poking it through the hole um, to kind of loosen it up. I'm just wiggling it a little bit back and forth like that. And then I'll also go through the other side. From the inside, I'm also kind of sticking it through and just, just expanding that hole a little bit so I'm going to easily be able to stick my spike through. So you can see I have um, a couple holes right now. And I'm going to go ahead and take the back, which looks like this. It's like a little screw. And I'm going to um, stick it through from the inside. So if you can see what I'm doing. So I stuck the little um, base through on the inside. You can see it's laying completely flat against the shoe. And on the outside, it looks like this. And I'm just going to screw this spike on top. And it's actually uh, better to do this with two hands so you can really secure it. But obviously, for the purpose of this video, I'm only using one. Um, but yeah, you want to just make sure it's completely tight. And if you need to use a... Uh, screwdriver just to kind of hold it in place while you screw the other end you could also do that so anyways 
once your spike is in, it should be completely secure and it should look like this. Um, all of mine are pretty tight on the shoes, but if you're worried about them coming out or loosening up, you could always secure the base with like a couple drops of super glue or crazy glue just so that it's, you know, extra tight or whatever. So that's pretty much it. And I'm going to do a couple more for you just to kind of show you the direction I'm going with these. And I hope you guys try this out for yourself. And I hope that you enjoy this tutorial. Just a really affordable do-it-yourself project. So I just attached another one inch um, cone spike on the back and then I'm going to switch it up a little bit. So for the hole that I drilled for you guys on camera, I'm going to put in a 5 8 inch tree spike, which looks like this, just to kind of switch it up and kind of like alternate patterns. But you can really use whatever kind you like or whatever kind that you have access to. Can this relationship last me? Can your heart? Uh. My babe, my babe, my babe. 